Hey folks, thanks for joining joining me today. Um, we're gonna do a webinar on application modernization using ECS Fargate. Um, and the uh, inspiration behind the uh, webinar is to highlight how ECS and Fargate can remove some of the complexities involved in application modernization, right? So we're gonna talk about what modernization means, what are the challenges and how ECS Fargate um, the approach using ECS Fargate simplifies that and helps you get to your value and application modernization faster. My name is Arvind Soni. I work as a principal containers specialist. I head our um, ECS go to market motions across the globe. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to share this um, application modernization path uh, that you can take with ECS Fargate. So just a, a quick overview of how um, how the talk uh, is going to progress. Um, application modernization is a broad term. Um, so I'm going to um, define and um, call out the focus of this particular talk. Um, and then we're going to look at how modernization looks with ECS and Fargate. And, and if you are not familiar with ECS and Fargate, don't worry about it. We'll touch on some of the core concepts and, and um, basics of it so that you you get enough picture of what these services do um, and then we're going to go into the benefits uh, which is essentially the no psd required part uh, how it is powerful yet easy for you to achieve your modernization goals uh, with ecs fargate um, and then um, we're going to see it working um, we'll do a demo using um, terraform plus ecs fargate where terraform is used to create the uh, infrastructure and, and provision the services that are needed. And then ECS Fargate is used to run your modern applications and, and will highlight the benefits and see it actual, uh, in, in um, actually working. Okay. Um, now, application modernization, as I said, is a, is, is, is a broad term, right? Um, but you can break it down into at least two major areas. Th these two areas are both interdependent. Uh, but it, it helps to think of it this way. One area is uh, related to your application itself, the application code. Um, uh, we have been writing software for a long time, so you may have valuable applications which have been written previously in a language which you don't want it to be in that one or you want to uh, rewrite the application. Uh, maybe it is a monolithic code which is, has become bulky and hard to maintain. Maybe you want to refactor it. Uh, or you are thinking of just totally retiring it and using SaaS application. So all sorts of different strategies um, are available to modernize the code itself. Okay, and that um, is an you know deep topic uh, on on refactoring, repackaging, rewriting. Right? Those are all uh, deep topic in itself. Um, we're not going to focus on that part yet in the in this conversation. We will focus on the part which is essentially the modernization of the supply chain of the software, right? Like the shipping, the, the building, the shipping and running of the, uh, of the software. Um, so assuming that you are able to, you know, create containers and create applications which are in a service oriented architecture. So assuming that you are able to do that on the core part of it, um, then how do you modernize the digital supply chain? Right, essentially the digital assembly line, um, and the reason to modernize this, uh, the build, deploy, run those aspects of it is um, because it, it it brings a lot of benefits in terms of accelerating your time to market. Right, you are able to ship the software faster. You are able to ship frequently. You are able to adapt to the changing market needs. Right, so that that's the primary benefit, like faster time to market. And then the other benefits are that since these modern uh, digital assembly line, the software delivery mechanisms, they use a lot of automation, which leads to operational efficiency for sure. Uh, but it also helps in improving the reliability and security because you are um, improving the, um, because of the automation, you are reducing the human factor, right? Like the, uh, the errors from the human factor. So the automation improves standardization, improves the security posture, improves the reliability of the applications. So that's why it's important to modernize the, uh, the 
quote unquote digital assembly line as well. And that's what we're going to focus on for this talk. Um, now, when when you go um, when you zoom in into this uh, the the modern uh, approach to build and ship software and run software, especially where, when you when you focus on doing that using containers, there are at least five main areas that um, that you will come across. Right, one is the CI/CD part, that's the continuous integration and continuous deployment, uh, where uh, you want to check in the code and the code chain has to trigger uh, the build and that has to trigger the deploy. Right and and trigger auto automated tests and things like that. Uh, so that's the CI/CD part. And then there is the part around where, uh, the containers, the environment for the containers to run, scheduling the containers, packing them properly, right? Um, provisioning the right infrastructure, ensuring the instrumentation for observability and all of those things. That's the container service container infrastructure part. The container service container infrastructure they play a central role in in these. Uh, digital assembly lines because they kind of are are uh, are the glue that that holds everything together right your code comes from ci cd pipeline um it gets run as container and then these services they help you instrument for so that you can observe the containers for performance or application for performance so that you can uh, ensure the right safeguard mechanisms like access control and network access control are in place so they they, they ensure the security of it and then, of course, the efficiency of scheduling and efficiency of auto scaling on demand, they all impact the cost, right? Different types of compute options, they impact the cost. So the container service and container infrastructure is central, and it, it impacts uh, all the areas from CI, CD to observability to security to cost. Okay. So these are the five uh, sort of dimensions or considerations in which um, we'll, we'll dabble and we'll highlight uh, how to achieve the modern digital assembly line, right? Um, and the the key point will be starting from what container service you use and how do you run the containers, um, because that, as I said, impacts all the other factors. So now, one approach um, to building this modern um, digital assembly line is using Amazon ECS and AWS Fargate. Amazon ECS is a container service. Uh, it's a fully managed container service. And AWS Fargate is a serverless uh, compute engine for containers. By serverless, we mean you don't have to worry about maintaining any container host, any container clusters, none of that, okay? So these two services um, address the needs of that core container service and container infrastructure, that, that central piece. And then these services integrate with a lot of other AWS services and a lot of other third-party partner services uh, to address the needs of CI, CD, observability, security, and ensure that everything happens in a cost-efficient manner, okay? So let's learn a little bit about ECS and a little bit about Fargate, and then we're gonna go into building the digital assembly line using these two services. So ECS, as I mentioned, uh, is a container service. It uh, You give it a lot of containers uh, in the form of service definition, task definition, and ECS will run these containers for you. It will run it on either on EC2, it can run it on Fargate, it can even run it on your own uh, container hosts that are outside of AWS, right? So it can run the containers in, in many places. Uh, it does the scheduling for you. Uh, it can take the containers and coordinate the registering, deregistering with the load balancer. So it orchestrates the uh, communication with the load balancer. Uh, it also works with the um, key services such as IAM, uh, so that uh, at every step you have the security and the containers have the exact access that they need, right? So it, ECS is very well integrated with a lot of valuable services. Uh, across observability, across security, across load balancing, networking, things like that, right? So it's a full, fully managed service. You don't have to manage or deploy any middleware to use ECS. It's just like EC2. You call the API, you give it the containers and the tasks to run, and we'll go ahead and provision and run it for you. Um, and as you will realize, it's very powerful, but it is also extremely simple to learn. There are no complicated concepts to, to pick up and no uh, you know, major middleware to learn and things like that, which, which is part of that no PSD promise that I made in the, in the beginning. And the best part, this particular service is free. 
right? You get charged for the compute and memory and network that you use, but you don't get charged for using ECS itself. ECS itself is free, okay? So that goes uh, along well with the cost dimension that we talked about. Now, Fargate is one of the compute options that you can use with ECS. Remember I said with ECS, you can run the containers either on EC2 or on Fargate or on your own container host. Now, Fargate is, I love it particularly because it's a serverless paradigm, meaning um, you don't have to worry about creating clusters of container hosts, managing those container hosts, upgrading, patching, worrying about the capacity in those clusters, uh, none of that, right? Fargate takes care of running your containers in a dynamically provisioned uh, small micro VM, which is just the right size. You tell that I want to run a container or a task with you know, certain CPU and memory, Fargate will provision that combination and only that task will run it, uh, run in that VM, all right? So it's secure and isolated by design. Uh, every task is running in its own micro VM, which is dynamically provisioned by Fargate. Fargate takes care of maintaining the operating system and, and keeping it up to date and all of those, right? So this is beautiful because you don't have to worry about capacity management over uh, headaches. So if, there, if the demand increases, you can simply scale the service. Uh, when there are a lot more deployments or a lot more services that are coming in, you don't have to worry about the capacity. You don't have to worry about upgrading the OS and the host and things like that, right? So it's really beautiful. Um, and this is this plays a key role in, in that no PhD required part. Um, because anyone who has managed a whole bunch of hosts and clusters knows that it is complicated, that the problem of capacity management uh, and, and upgrading a whole fleet of hosts is inherently difficult, right? Uh, for Fargate also, there is no upfront fee. You only pay for what you use. Um, and in Fargate, generally we see that the utilization is much, much better because you are provisioning the resources, hopefully based on the need of your uh, application. So if your application needs one vCPU and two GB RAM, that's what you will uh, provision for that particular task and set of containers, okay? So it's a pay for what you use, uh, no upfront fees. And in addition to that, Fargate also has Fargate Spot, um, which gives you the our surplus capacity uh, at a heavily heavy discount, like seventy to eighty percent discount. So particularly think about your um, uh, like maybe non-prod environments, dev testing environments, right? Uh, you can run them easily on Fargate Spot and save a lot of money uh, doing that, right? And you still get all the benefits: no uh, no cl uh, no cluster management, no container host management, all of that. And recently, we added support for Fargate Graviton. Uh, Graviton are our ARM-based uh, processors. So if you are able to build your containers and build your application using ARM architecture, then Fargate Graviton will give you further savings. Um, Graviton, uh, what we have published is uh, overall price performance gives you 40% uh, benefit, 20% better uh, performance with 20% less cost, right? So across all the dimensions, as you can see, um, we, we take the cost very seriously. We take the key integrations to security and observability very seriously. Uh, and yet we want to simplify and remove all the unnecessary, undifferentiated heavy lifting from you as you build the uh, digital assembly line. Okay. So ECS, fully managed container service, Fargate, uh, serverless compute engine, no host, no cluster to worry about. Um, beautiful. This you know, lays the foundation for that no PSD uh, required way of building the uh, modern applications and their pipelines. Now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, it's not just about the container and, and the container infrastructure naturally, right? Like the whole thing has to come together from the build part, which is the CI, CD. So Amazon, ECS, uh, and Fargate, they integrate with ECR, which is our uh, image repository. They integrate with code build, uh, where you can build the containers, they integrate with code pipeline, which can orchestrate across different stages. Um, they integrate with code deploy, which can help you do a rolling deployment, blue green deployment, things like that, right? Uh, so that they integrate very well with the CI CD line of uh, services. And not just our services, but you can use other services as well. You can use other repositories, uh, any OCI compliant repository will work. 
right? You can use other build tools. You can use other deployment tools. Uh, it's very flexible. I'm just highlighting one particular path of building the uh, digital assembly line using ECS Fargate. And then there are turnkey integrations for observability, right? You don't have to think about, oh, what do I need to do to get the basic matrix out of, uh, out of my running task? Uh, I will show you it's just a matter of adding a flag and the container insights, uh, CloudWatch con container insights will get all the details of your tasks and clusters, right? Um, you can send the events to event bridge, also very easy, right? Um, you can send the logs. Uh, it, it, all, it has a built-in AWS logs driver. It will send the logs um, by default to the CloudWatch. And you can use our other tools like FireLens or your own custom log forwarding agents as well. And then in terms of security, uh, you'll see that everywhere I am is a first class citizen. If your task needs to talk to DynamoDB uh, and another task needs to talk to RDS uh, and the other task needs to talk to S3, you can give each one of these tasks in each one of these containers just the right privilege that they need and nothing more, right? These granular I am roles are applied to the task and that's the only thing that the task can do, right? It can access. Now, each task gets its own network interface in Fargate, so you can apply security groups. What, what all things uh, can, uh, can talk to this ta uh, task and, and container and where all this container can go and, and reach, right? So you can control the network access. If you have sensitive secrets, you can put it in Secrets Manager. ECS has a native integration. It will go pull the secrets from the Secrets Manager and uh, make it accessible for your containers to use it. You don't have to put the sensitive secrets in your Docker file and things like that, okay? And we have extensive compliance certification across both of these services. So HIPAA, PCI, FedRAMP, various levels, we have uh, extensive list of compliance certifications. And above all, last but not least, when you're building these modern you know, assembly lines and uh, you're modernizing your application, you have to be very cognizant of cost. Uh, and Fargate is spot, as I mentioned, 70 to 80% less cost. Uh, you're able to use our surplus capacity. Fargate Graviton, 40% benefit on price performance. Uh, savings plan applied to uh, using Fargate as well. So you, if you have predictable uh, needs and product, predictable consumption, you can uh, definitely leverage savings plan, which will give you uh, additional cost savings there. So you can see that it's, it's not just about containers and running containers, right? But the uh, ECS and Fargate uh, services are very beautifully positioned and very nicely built so that they integrate with all the key things that you need to run your applications reliably in production 24 seven, okay? Um, and this is what the customers love. Uh, as you can see from this Vanguard highlight, Vanguard uses ECS and Fargate uh, to balance both, like how do we move fast, but at the same time be secure and operationally efficient. And uh, to highlight the part, which is like, it's fully automated. There's no middleware, right? Like there's no container orchestration software to worry about. There's no cluster host to worry about. It's fully automatable end to end, right? Uh, and we'll see that in the demo as well. It's secure by default. Each task is running in its own small micro VM, has the network access control, all the goodness, yeah? So you can, you can go very fast. You can give autonomy to a lot of teams, right? Uh, they can build their own pipelines. They can uh, they can accelerate their own uh, time to market um, and essentially reduce the what's kind of called the like no ops pattern. You can establish that. Uh, or if you are a smaller company, right? Like uh, maybe you're not as big as Vanguard, but you have some innovative ideas. Like Aero, uh, Aerobotics is a company which uh, takes images of the fruit trees and fields and and helps the farmers detect crop yield or like uh, challenges to the crop yield, anything that might be hurting the crop yield. Very innovative solution, a lot of image processing being done, right? Uh, so they definitely need to scale uh, and they're a young company, they need to go to the market faster. Um, so they would definitely want to reduce the operational burden and which is where ECS Fargate and all those integration comes in. So it's very quick, very easy, um, has very little learning curve for anybody to use it. Um, so that companies like Aerobotics, they can focus on their business value and essentially they're literally addressing the world hunger problem by improving the crop yield. Now, let's uh, um, switch gears and dive deeper into how the ECS Fargate uh, can help you build uh, this modern digital assembly line 
Um, and for, for this particular demo, we'll use Terraform um, to create the uh, infrastructure for our infrastructure as a code. But you can use Terraform, you can use CloudFormation, you can use CDK. Um, and even if you're not familiar with any of this infrastructure as a code, there are also services built on top of ECS Fargate. Um, for example, there is AWS Copilot, which can create turnkey infrastructure for you without you writing any code. Um, there is also App Runner, um, which can run web applications without you having to worry about any of the infrastructure provision. Okay, So there are higher form of services as well. Uh, but in this talk, we'll focus on building the modern digital assembly line using ECS and Fargate, um, and we'll provision the infrastructure using Terraform. Okay. So before we go there, let's just, um, I've been, speaking some of these terms already. So if you're not familiar with it, just a quick refresher, right? Um, a task in ECS uh, is, is the fun, sort of like the uh, fundamental unit to execute um, containers, uh, to run containers. Uh, you can have one or more containers inside of the task, but this is the smallest unit that gets deployed and run. Okay, you specify the compute, networking needs, IAM, runtime configurations. You can specify all of those things for the task. Okay, um, one or more identical tasks uh, form a service. So for example, a load balanced web application. So you will have individual web app tasks uh, and there will be a load balancer sitting in front of it and that whole unit is a service, right? So it's one or more identical tasks. Uh, service is also a construct which will uh, keep track of unhealthy tasks and it will replace it, right? Uh, it will also um, register and deregister to the load balancer automatically. You don't have to worry about maintaining any load balancer controller and things like that. You can do rolling deployments, um, meaning you can replace existing versions of the task with newer versions of the task, right? Um, and rolling means that you can do it in batch sizes. So service is that construct which helps you maintain the life cycle of a group of identical tasks, okay? Um, Cluster, cluster in ECS is just a very simple affair. It's a, it's a logical grouping uh, of the tasks uh, and of the service. It uh, you can use it to you know separate between dev and prod or buy side and sell side. You can have different tenants uh, tenants um, mapped to the clusters. It's just a logical grouping. There's no control plane or no other complexity around cluster. Um, it's just uh, whatever way you want to separate the services and tasks. It's essentially logical grouping of the of the services and tasks. Okay. So um, before we go look into the code and look at the uh, look at the AWS console, let me give you an overview of um, what we are going to set up um, in the demo, right? So we are going to create this ECS cluster, the sort of quote unquote core infrastructure uh, needed to run your containers, right? And you will see that uh, it is pretty simple, pretty basic things are needed to just get going. The infrastructure is nothing complicated. Uh, most of you are much more familiar to, uh, much more familiar with these AWS constructs. All you need is uh, that ECS cluster, which you will see is just essentially just a name uh, in a particular region in an account, right? Uh, you will need a VPC and, and you'll need some public subnets and a private subnet. You don't necessarily need public subnets. You can just run everything in private subnet as well. So you have both the options. Um, and you will need one specific role, which I'm going to talk about when we get there. And that's pretty much it. That's it. That's all the infrastructure that you need. No middleware, no complicated things to run. This is it. This is the infrastructure that will run your applications, right? So then we will um, create um, one service, a load balance service. And in this case, the, um, uh, the tasks happen to be running on the public subnet. And these tasks are running using Fargate, right? So note that I have not created any container host. I have not created any EC2 host, right? Um, so we will use Fargate to run these tasks. And it's a load balance ECS service. And once we go over this particular setup, then we will look at how to do the CI/CD part, right? Uh, which covers uh, the part where 
you essentially want the code change uh, when the application team makes a code change into their repository that triggers a build. In this case, it uses code build uh, to build the new container image and the image gets stored in ECR. And then code pipeline is used to coordinate between, hey, the image is ready and built and call ECS to say, can you update the service with the new image? So then ECS will do the rolling deployment, which um, then makes it make the uh, makes Fargate to pull the new container images and run the new class. Okay, um, and when we look at the service and when we look at the cluster, we'll also highlight the various places where IAM and security groups are in play from the security perspective, and we'll also highlight how. Uh, you know, simple turnkey integrations with CloudWatch give you the matrix and logs without any heavy lifting on your part. Okay. So with that, let me switch over to my account and just for good measures, let me see if I am still logged in. Okay. Um, now, let me just quickly show you the application. It's nothing fancy. It's just a hello world. It says ciao. It gives you the IP of the task which it is hitting in uh, the task that is sitting behind the load balancer. Uh, if you have done ECS workshop, this is our front end application from the ECS workshop. So just a simple text message spitting out the IP of the task that is sitting behind the load balancer. Okay. Now I'm going to do one uh, small thing. Um, since we are a global citizen, I'm going to change the message. Um, this will also highlight that uh, when I change the message from my code repository, how does that change trigger the build and then trigger the deployment and trigger that code pipeline part. It takes a bit of a time, so we'll get this started and we'll go look at how that service is running and where that service is running and we'll come back to the, uh, to the code, uh, to, to the pipeline part and Hopefully this change has triggered all the right things and, and it is building and deploying, okay? So here's our service, simple service, hello message uh, with an IP. Uh, where is this service running? So this service is running in my cluster test, this cluster, okay? Uh, I got one service and it is the front end service and the service has three tasks running inside of it. You know, the three tasks. Um, now let's take a look at one of these tasks. Okay. Um, this task here is running in Fargate. There was no EC2 anywhere, right? These tasks are all running in Fargate. And as I said, in Fargate, every task run its, runs in its own micro VM. They all get their own uh, network interface, right? You can attach the security group to every to each uh, to each task and control the network access. So this is you know, directly in play right here. Um, so you have these tasks, they're running in Fargate, they have certain CPU and memory size and, and, and specification there. Now, if we go back to the cluster, how did I create this cluster, the cluster test? What Terraform code did I use? So if you wanna take a peek into that, here's my repository. Um, this is the core infrastructure which has a few modules that I use, the cluster, the IAM networking. So let me zoom in into this one. And let me increase the font a bit. Okay. So in here, um, by the way, this, this is all the cluster, this is all the infrastructure that we need to create. Nothing crazy, right? Uh, this is the AWS profile, uh, the, the credentials set up. Here's the networking. Um, I'm using the networking module that I have uh, written, but you can use the uh, networking module that is in Terraform AWS repository. Um, there are a few different options. Bottom line, and you don't even have to maybe create your own network. You already have VPCs and subnets that you want to use. All you need is uh, the VPC and uh, the list of private and public subnets that you want to use. Okay. So in this case, I'm creating a few public subnets and private subnets behind the scenes with this particular side range. And this is the cluster creation. And I'm, I'm going to go into that module as well. But this is it. I just gave it a name. And I talked about one particular role that you have to create. This is the role. It's called the ECS task execution role. This is the role that gives the uh, ECS agent permissions to pull images to send logs on behalf of the task. 
right? Uh, you can create this once and you can use it uh, in many, many clusters. Um, there's nothing, nothing crazy about it. It's just the uh, uh, ECS agent uses this role to go fetch uh, the image, go uh, send the logs, or if you're using secrets, uh, it will use this to talk to the secrets manager, right? So let's take a look at this cluster. How crazy is it to this uh, to create this cluster? So if I go back and look into the cluster module, and here, nothing crazy at all. Just the name and enabling the container insights. Okay, you can do a few more things. Uh, you can enable um, uh, if you if you want to set up uh, ECS exec, like the ability to open a command prompt into the task. You can set that up as well. Um, you can set up encryption for your logs. You can set up custom logs. So there are a few additional things you can do. But if you want to just keep it simple, just give it a name, enable the container insights uh, to get the basic matrix, and that's it. No middleware, none of that, right? It's pretty simple. All right, so let's see. This created the infrastructure. So as you can see here, there's a cluster test. Uh, it uses a bunch of, uh, I think it, it has few private subnets and public subnets and things like that. OK, so now I created this particular service. Um, how did I create this service, or what does the service definition look like, right? So let's go to my other folder, which is the, the ECS frontend demo is my ECS frontend was my uh, application. And this is the deployment folder for that. And here is the main file. It uses a few different modules. And I'll uh, walk through that slowly. But first of all, um, when you deploy a service, let's say from some application team, you need some input from them. You need the name. Hey, what port are you going to be serviced? What kind of health checks would you be doing? Is it a load balance application? Uh, how much CPU memory you need? So you can take some input from your application team uh, along with the Docker file, they can give you, let's say, a manifest file or application specification or application needs. Uh, it's nothing crazy. It's just mo mostly CPU memory port, whether it's in a load balance application or not, that kind of detail. You can also ask them about auto scaling setup if you want to do that. But that's pretty much all that you need from the app team. Most of the things they should know about, right? Um, and then when you create the service, um, you need to know where you want to create it, right? Which cluster and things like that. So this is the output of that core infrastructure module, right? The cluster ID, the cluster name, the cluster region, the ARN, and the various subnets that I am I, I'm using and, and I've created, and that particular task execution role that I uh, created as well, okay? So again, um, those are all the identity-related stuff. Um, Here's the part where I create the load balanced service application. Um, if you are if you are familiar with provisioning load balancer, um, this is just simply creating a target group for the task, which will have uh, hit the uh, which will hit the you know backing Fargate instances at that port three thousand in this case, right? Here's the security group for the ALB server, right? Here's the ALB itself, which is getting created on the public subnet. Here's the repository to create the images. This is what we're going to use in the code build. Um, here's the task definition. Nothing crazy, right? Um, here's the, the task execution role, which you put it in the task definition. You give the name of the container that you want to use, CPU memory, which your uh, application team has provided, the repository URL, which is here, um, and then the cluster region, the container port. Right? Absolutely um, basics. that very intuitive thing that makes sense for you to add. Um, and here's the security group of the task. Remember, every task has its own ENI in Fargate, and you can provide uh, pretty granular control for what this task does over the network, right? So in this case, all we are saying is that this particular task, all it can do is communicate to the ALB. That's it, just the inbound communication there, right? So it, it, it will give you the, uh, from the security group ALB server, it will, you'll get the security group of that, right? For, associated with the ALB. Now, all of this, you wrap, since we are going to create identical tasks, it's a service sitting behind a load balancer, so we create an ECS service, right? 
uh, service name, number of tasks you want, one, three, whatever starting number of tasks that you need. So all of that gets created here and rest of it is fairly intuitive as well. You get the task definition, um, you added the security group for the task here and so on and so forth. Really, you know, small subset of things that are intuitive and, and, and easy for you to add, okay? Uh, we'll come back to the code pipeline in a bit. So let's see uh, some other advantages of Fargate. Uh, one thing which I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this service and I'm going to update the desired count. Um, so right now the desired count is three, so let's update it to five. Let's say the demand for our application has increased. Everybody is hitting this hello page. They're loving it. So we're going to increase the number of tasks. And one thing to note here is um, I'm not worried about the capacity management part of it. Uh, I can, you know, I can configure this using auto scaling so that when the CPU threshold or the request count increases, then I'm going to um, then I'm going to trigger the auto scaling, right? So you, you are able to maintain the reliability, you are able to maintain the SLAs, you are able to serve the requests, uh, you are able to scale up and down, but you don't have to worry about any of the cluster capacity management. Do I have enough EC2 hosts is not a concern, right? Because Fargate will create um, individual VMs for to run these tasks and it will scale the task, okay? So we'll let that happen uh, and as I had promised that ECS has a lot of turnkey integrations um, with things like observability. So let's take a look at, um, are we getting the matrix for CloudWatch or not? So I'll just duplicate this tab and I'll go to CloudWatch. So just to recap, right? Like uh, I have created uh, an, an environment to run this uh, in the ECS cluster. I've created a cluster, I've created a VPC, I'm running a load balance service. Um, the service is getting auto scaled. You already see that it has gone up to four tasks, right? Um, and I have done all of this using infra as a code. So I can repeat this in different regions or, or as more services come on board, I can repeat the same process, okay? So we have, we have good, we, we, we got the uh, application running in an environment. Now we have to go take a look if um, out of the box, we get some observability and monitoring and logs and things like that. So here you will see that the, since we enabled at the cluster level, the container insights, we'll go in here into the matrix, uh, into the container insights, and you will see the that for the cluster test, for all of my clusters, I have it enabled. Uh, and I was running some Apache Bench, you know, load testing on my small application just to highlight the fact that it captures CPU utilization and the number of tasks and all the basic metrics that you will need um, as, as, you, um, as you go, as the application goes through its changes, uh, it will capture all the core metrics that you are needed, okay? Uh, and you can see here that the, uh, when we increase the count, it looks like at some point the count went all the way up to six because it is doing um, scale out and, and then it's going to uh, probably kill one of them because we, we, we set to increase it to five, right? So I'll go back. This is all done by default. We didn't add any agent. We didn't run anything crazy inside of, of our application. This is the ECS agent itself sending the matrix to CloudWatch, okay? Pretty turnkey. And same thing with logs. Um, the logs are available here in the log groups. Um, you will see it for the cluster test. And here's the Fargate telemetry coming from the task itself, right? So you'll have the task ID. There's not much going on over here. There's a bunch of task logs will all come over here. You can also enable event bridge I had mentioned. Um, even bridge is a simple, a very simple and powerful service which you can use to create rules. Um, like for example, I have here is the ECS rules. It will generate a lot of events associated with when the service is created, task is created. You can use it for troubleshooting in case the deployment gets stuck, right? It's pretty simple. Source is ECS, what's the destination? It's a, in, in this case, it's a, a log stream, CloudWatch logs. So you can send the, all the events over there. So good, you got observability, pretty turnkey. We didn't have to do anything. 
uh, just give the right task execution role so that ECS can send these logs and metrics on, on your behalf, right? Okay, so here, um, let's see what's happening with our service. Did it get scaled up? Look, beautifully scaled up to five since our demand is increased. And we didn't have to worry about any capacity management, any provisioning, patching, upgrading of the host, and none of that. Okay, so beautiful. Um, now let's talk a little bit about that code pipeline. Um, well, we changed the message over there. Oh, yeah, beautiful. So we changed the message from ciao to namaste from, <laughs> from my um, application code, right? So what happened behind the scenes over there? So behind the scenes, what is going on is let's go into the code pipeline. Um, here and inside here we'll see that pipeline test front end is in the test cluster. Front end is my application. Um, it triggered a build because there was a uh, GitHub, uh, there was a, a source code change on the master branch, so it triggered it triggered that uh, notification, which triggered a build over here using code build, and it's not a crazy application. Right? It's a simple. Ruby on Rails application. So it just build the container. Once it built the container, it called ECS um, to deploy it. Now, ECS has a built-in rolling deployment. So I don't need any middleware again, right? Like nothing. I don't need, I don't even need code deploy in this case. All I have to do is say, hey, ECS, um, trigger a rolling deployment. Um, the container image is there, the task definition has been updated, go use this task definition and trigger a rolling deployment, right? So all of this stitching is done by a code pipeline. New container gets built, task definition gets updated, ECS calls the service to do the rolling deployment, okay? Um, and you can see, how does this code look inside Terraform? We had stopped over here, right? Um, again, nothing crazy uh, to use code pipeline. Uh, uh, you need S3 to store the build artifacts. So that's where I'm creating the S3 bucket. Um, again, I am roles, the specific IAM roles, just for uh, principle of least, least privilege, you know, just giving it the right IAM roles. This is about the security at every step. Um, you have to have the right policies. And then here's the code build part. Um, the code bit is also not, not an overly complicated service. It's pretty simple. You t tell it which repository you are going to use, right? So in here uh, is, the, is the build spec. You give it the folder path. Um, and there is also the setting of um, what, uh, what branch you are listening to for to trigger these actions, okay? And this is the task definition family. So when the container image gets built, this is the task definition family. The version gets uh, updated, right? Um, rest everything we've already seen. And this is the code pipeline part. Um, it's taking the GitHub token so that it has the access, uh, it's, uh, takes the name of the repository, the branch, and things like that, okay? Uh, that's it. The whole pipeline is created using these managed services. Code build is a fully managed service. Code pipeline is a fully managed service. We are not installing any middleware, anything like that, okay? Um, so in, in a nutshell, we have created all of this thing and we have um, we have created the whole pipeline. Uh, it does observability, it does security at every step, it runs the application. Uh, and one of the things is that when we increase this from, um, th uh, from three to five, new tasks got created and, and, uh, and, and got registered to the load balancer ALB, right? I didn't do any of that, ECS does that. ECS takes the new task, it registers to the load balancer, and if when we do rolling deployment, it removes the old task, right? So all of these turnkey integrations are there uh, from ECS. All we did was created a load balance service. Um, we created the pipeline, and we triggered the changes. This is essentially what the modern digital uh, assembly line is about, um, to be able to roll out the changes faster, to be able to get to market faster, um, and we are doing this all without any complicated challenges of auto scaling, of managing the, uh, the, the cluster capacity, of worrying about the container host. We are doing this using all the native integration that ECS has across the entire set of services. 
both AWS services as well as third-party services. You can use other observability tools. You can use other security tools as well, right? Um, and best of all, it is very cost efficient. Uh, ECS is free. And you saw that Fargate, the resources that are provisioned are just the right size that you ask for the task, right? And as you scale up and down, the number of tasks increases. When you scale down, the demand is gone, it goes down. You only pay for what you use, okay? Um, and we did all of this without any complicated learning, right? I'm not. I'm not going to claim I'm a DevOps expert. We set up, but we set up the code pipeline, um, uh, code pipeline, code build. We set up the uh, CI/CD pipeline, right? Uh, and 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 we set up the whole cluster. We set up the infrastructure. We set up the service, the load balancer, all of these things, using infra as a code. So not like uh, clicking in in the UI. It's something which is repeatable and scalable. Uh, so it's simple to learn and set up, and yet scalable without any major effort. Uh, major intensive research <laughs> to, to be specific required, right? Um, if you if you liked it, uh, and if you want to learn more, and if you want to modernize and build modern digital assembly lines, uh, ecsworkshop.com is a great uh, great tool as well. Uh, it doesn't have Terraform based modules, but it will uh, teach you using CDK, which uses CloudFormation underneath, um, or you can also try out Copilot, which, uh, as I mentioned, is a higher level abstraction, which uh, allows you to not even worry about all these things that we create. It will create the cluster for you. It will create the subnets for you. It will create the load balancer, the load balance service, all of this just from a simple command line. All you have to do is uh, co-pilot service in it, co-pilot environment in it, those kind of simple commands. So it's, it's, it's also very straightforward, right? So there are various options you have. Um, if you are in the camp of Terraform and uh, if you want to try out ECS Fargate, hope this um, this uh, hope this um, webinar gave you a lot of uh, good information. All the code for this, um, all the code for the demo here is available at my repository, Arvind Sony 80 ECS Fargate. This is the Fargate uh, Terraform webinar video. Um, you can you can try this out using these. Um, there are other much better uh, Terraform modules available as well. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you again for spending time with me and um, hope this helps you accelerate your business, um, bring a lot of efficiency for your business. And uh, we'd love to engage with you more on um, your adoption of ECS and Fargate. Thank you again.